I would like to start my presentation by recognizing that the current location where I'm presenting is located on the lands of the Wurundjeri people, and I wish to acknowledge them as the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. These sets of photos you are witnessing corresponds to some of the extreme conditions of homelessness and poverty in Manila. Just to put it into context, one out of every 21 Filipino is actually homeless. According to a study, Metro Manila will have a housing shortage of around 1 million units by 2030 unless we find a possible solution. If you look closely, housing shortage is not the only problem. The capital also suffers from disorganized planning which causes most of the land to be completely paved or covered in concrete. This is a map of Metro Manila during 1988, and this is the one today. And you can see that there isn't much space left to build. So with all of these in mind, how can I then apply the Nightingale model, expand it and reach out to the people that need housing the most? Good evening everyone, I'm Han, and I'll be presenting my thesis, Nightingale Manila. Nightingale Manila is a product of my passion and love for the Philippines. It is fueled by the idea that everyone deserves the equal right to housing. It explores and reimagines the existing Philippine National Railway and aims to provide 1 million housing units for Filipinos currently living under poverty. So why the Philippine National Railway? After careful examination of the city's urban fabric, I found the railway as the most ideal siting for this project. First, it has access to the entire capital city via the public transportation and its existing 18 stations can serve as magnets and hubs for the project. It also has low cost or potential free spatial real estate as the land belongs to the government. In fact, these are some of the examples of government projects built along the railway, but most of them are already run down and in need of replacement as it already declared a safety hazard. And lastly, the people. Along the railway, we can also find some of the current slum dwellings so as not to displace their families and livelihood somewhere else. Now, how are we going to build it? Inspired by some of these precedent studies, I'll be utilizing prefabricated production, modularized construction to provide a continuous infrastructure that can be replicated along the railway. Let's start with the design. Using a modular grid of 6 by 6 meters, housing modules are derived from its users. So for small or new Filipino families with infants or small child, the tail houses are the way to go. For families with teenagers, the one bedroom module provides a bigger room for running around. For large families, two bedroom modules has a maximum capacity of eight people. And for families who enjoy having their own gardens, the loft module provides a front yard and giving that housing equity back to the people. And lastly, the co-living module provides a living quarter for workers and laborers in the heart of the city. All of these come with additional creative modules such as customizable wall panels, windows and balconies as Filipinos love to decorate. These housing modules can be built beside, on top or below each other with endless combinations. The housing modules then form a community, multiple communities then form what I call a barangay or a Filipino term for a village. The barangay has two models, the hub cluster and the housing cluster. With the hub cluster, it is divided into three zones, housing on top, commercial in the middle, and railway station below. Because it is on top of an existing railway station, these hub clusters then become the revenue generating models for the project. And the other one is the housing cluster, substituting out the commercial and station below with more housing zones. In terms of program and arrangement, starting with the hub cluster, so to connect these barangays, first we have the elevated park with bicycle lane. It serves as the main access and mimics the street of a city. It is a public zone with access from below and a connection to the rest of the city. Surrounding that elevated deck are these interchangeable modules not limited to shop and food stalls or tricycle stations. Going further up, in the middle of the housing zone, you can find these community modules of karaoke where people can sing together and dance, community kitchen to cook for food, 
or even religious activities such as Catholic Mass to provide social amenities for the community. On the rooftop, first there is a shared laundry area with shared clothesline for the barangay. And in front, there is a rooftop basketball court. So this is designed from Filipinos' love for the sport. Literally, they play basketball anywhere and everywhere, and even in extreme situations. And it's also interchangeable with the Sky Garden module as well for socializing. And all of the rooftops are interconnected with each other. The idea is that these barangay housing clusters are distributed along the railway with barangay hubs serving as magnets and access to the rest of the city. And to break them up further in an urban scale, every 20 clusters or 500 meters has a community park to provide that green spaces back to the city as well. Now putting them all together side by side in section, you can see that every cluster has adequate space for light and ventilation across the project. Finally, allow me to narrate and take you through the journey of a Filipina worker as she heads home from work through an animation short film. The story of Maria. Maria is seen looking from the window of a train. She's very excited to go home after a long day of work. She swiftly exits the train onto the platform and walks up using the stairs that connects the train station to the elevated deck. On the elevated deck, just like any Manila street, there are people walking, exercising, relaxing, and cycling. And right beside the entrance of a barangay, she stops in front of a food stall to buy their family their favorite shawarma rice for dinner. As Maria heads up to her unit, she passes by her neighbor singing karaoke while eating lechon baboy, a local favorite Filipino pork dish. As she approaches her unit, her husband is seen sitting in front of their unit waiting for her. They enter together and is greeted by their children. They sat down, gave thanks for the food, and ate together. After dinner, Maria and her family heads up to the roof deck and she and her two sons join their neighbor for a basketball game while her husband dries their clothes on the clothesline while watching them play. And in the distance, a new Nightingale barangay is seen being built. Fast forward to two years later, most of the units are now occupied as more and more Nightingale barangays are built. Christmas is fast approaching. Decorations are promptly being illuminated to celebrate the joyous holiday of the season. Nightingale Manila is a product of my passion and love for the Philippines. It is fueled by the idea that everyone deserves the equal right to housing. Nightingale Manila is a platform where each owner and individual can customize and be their creative self, organically generating the building's own identity over time. Nightingale Manila is an architecture by the people, for the people. Thank you.